Hi, welcome to another video related to MCP, the Model Context Protocol. These days, there are several videos coming out, but actually when I discuss with the um, techie community, there is a general lack of understanding on the communication mechanisms. Last video, we saw uh, that two different types of transports these MCPs can use. One is STD-IO, that is local, that is client running the server locally within itself. But that is not a production use case. Production use case is using SSC transport. It is called server sent events transport. And this is not normally used so because we are all used to REST way of communication. Now, this is what we are going to look at it in detail in this video. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogani. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. This is a short video, but there will be a series of uh, three or four videos. So, we will see SSE, how it works. We will compare it with the rest and we will also see web sockets in subsequent videos so that you will have a complete understanding because you also need to know web sockets because this is the time of real-time APIs. These large language model providers are offering real-time API based voice interaction. But in this video, we are just focusing on SSC, server send events. So uh, what we will learn in this video is what is SSC, then how to build an SSC server using Python. We will use fast API library and then how to build an SSE client. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. We are not going to talk of MCP at all in this video. Our focus is on the transport called SSE. Okay, so I have made some slides. So what is SSE? It is mainly useful for real-time updates. We have the server here and we have the client. Client can be mobile apps or uh, web browser, etc. So, th this is our client. Client can be another server, like an MCP client. Now, this is the SSC server. Don't worry, I'm using SSC here. It's just an application, uh, like a web server. But its ability is one way. So, SSC happens one way. Sorry. Clear? So, one way means who initiates this communication? That is the interesting thing. The server initiates this one way communication. So, a client cannot really initiate. So, what is the use for it? This is very good for dashboards where you are offering real-time updates, etc. So, remember, SSC means one-way communication from server to client. The server can be any application and the client can be, again, any application. So, SSC lets you continuously stream data from server to client. So, a quick comparison with web sockets and polling. Okay, so, so here we have SSC web sockets and polling. So, here what happens? This is one way, whereas web socket is two way. Clear? And polling means we continuously request the server for information when we use REST protocol. Okay? In use case, this is very good for live updates like stock updates and things like that. IoT device updating temperature, etc. And efficiency, this is efficient. This is also efficient. Web socket also is efficient. And here, there is a latency. It depends on when we are querying, maybe every minute or, you know, every 10 seconds. So, this is not, not real time. Okay? Not real time. And uh, the web sockets are used for gaming and chat and, of course, real-time applications like uh, audio interface. When you build application with uh, video or audio input, we will need web sockets. Okay, so why suddenly SSE became popular? It is because of MCP. 
MCP can use SSE. So MCP can use HTD IO, but we don't want it because that is not a production use case. MCP can use SSE transport. Okay. So we are going to see a hello world demo of SSE. Okay. So another comparison with rest, rest in malls, request and response. Uh, request goes to the server and then server response. And this is one way. Okay. The important thing is it is initiated by the server. So SSE for updates. Perfect for real-time server updates, REST for request, ideal for standard API interfaces. That is what we have been using, a combined system. See this one? A combined system will achieve a well-designed system. And guess what is this? This is our MCP. It uses SSC from server to client and rest to pass messages or select tools etc okay so time for our demo i have created a folder v1 and in that folder i have a docker compose which has got sse server i'm all my uh, applications are docker so that you don't need to install anything on your desktop just have docker so i have an SSE client and SSE server. So we will see how it works. So you clone my repo and then you will get Techie Talks AI folder. There will be an SSE folder, CD into that SSE folder. I'm already in that SSE folder. There, CD into V1. And if you look there, there is a Docker file to create the containers for this server and the client and docker compose to run the server and client then we have two applications one is SSE client another is SSE server so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the SSE server alone just to bring some clarity docker compose up what do we we call it SSE server pi okay SSE server is up and running and it is listening to port 8000. Okay. And I will use curl from another terminal, curl, accept text event stream and access the MCP server. See, these messages are coming one way from the server. And here, what is the client? The curl application is which is a command line application that can interact using HTTP, is receiving the messages from the server. We are not requesting anything. Okay, so SSE server is working. Now, before we look at the code, let's also run the containerized SSE client. So let's come out of it. What do we call SSE client pi? is the client okay see here client is continuously receiving message from the server okay now in this uh, my docker compose i have also added an extra curl section if you want you can run the curl client also just for seeing how a curl client also runs if you don't have curl on your desktop so here the client is running and curl also is receiving the message. So this shows that messages from one server can be received by multiple clients as well. Okay. Let's go over the code. It's a very short code. Let's understand the code line by line. So here we have the imports of uh, Python libraries and f uh, the, this API is implementing fast API library. And here if you see this is the first time if you are a fast API user, maybe this is the first time you are seeing this operation. This lets us stream data out of the endpoint. Okay, so here we are creating the fast API object and then we have an event stream. Okay, and then the endpoint is defined here. So this is what we are accessing from the client, the host IP address and the port. 
and then slash SSE. So whenever we browse slash SSE, this function SSE endpoint gets called. Okay, so and that function has only one line. Okay, so if you look at that line, it is returning a streaming response. This streaming response class is being called here and we are passing the event stream and we are giving the media text slash event stream. Clear? So, and this event stream calls this function and that function is a continuous loop, infinite loop. So, this is an infinite loop. It is incrementing the counter just for us to know that it is working and it is just responding this message and then it sleeps for two seconds. So, this is continuously sending out the message and that message comes here. This is continuously streaming that message to this endpoint. Clear? It is a very simple, just actually three or four lines accomplishes this and the last line is the UECON which is a efficient web server which listens to this port. It is important to note that we are using async function. I have made a video on async and await. So, while this is sleeping, the messages can continue to be streamed out because we are using async io.sleep which is a non-blocking function. Okay, so that is the server, SSE server. Let us now look at the SSE client. It is importing async io which allows this async and await type of non-blocking functions and we are also using async io http which is also an asynchronous mechanism to call http. Okay, so we have just one function SSE client. We are passing the uh, server URL here and the name sse-server-py is the service name in our docker file. So, if you look at our docker compose, this is the server sse-server-py. That is the sse server we are specifying here. Okay. And then here async function with ai with this async io http, we are creating a client session. We are calling the client session session. Session dot get with the server URL will get the streamed message from the server. And we are calling that response. Here for line in response dot content, if it is present, it will print. That is it. This line dot decode convert the streamed bytes into string and it uh, dot strip removes the white spaces. Okay, so that is it. So here we are async io run this SSE client. Clear? So essentially this is the backbone of an MCP server client communication that uses SSE protocol. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thank you for your time. See you in the next video where we will further extend this with incoming REST calls. Remember, this server to client communication is one way. So, we will see what we can do to establish a two-way communication, which is what is used in our MCP model context protocol. Please give your valuable comments. Kindly like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.